All right, so now we're going to that. I'm going to do another quick tip for uh, UCISP candidates out there, this time on PKI. And we want to say at the consumer level, again, you don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be the cook at my restaurant. You just have to be a good waiter. On your menu at my restaurant, the crypto uh, is, is three, uh, three algorithm types on the menu. Right? Most of the time, we think of symmetric encryption. It's what we've had for since we've had writing. And when you encrypt data symmetrically, think of these as keys to a safe. Right? This is still what we use it. If you're encrypting data today, that data, it could have been encrypted in the content of an email and whatever, an entire hard drive, all of that is likely encrypted with AES today. It's the most popular algorithm in the world. But whatever you use, it will be symmetric. But you know what you can't put in a safe, the key to the safe. Symmetric keys are data encryption keys. Asymmetric keys, at least when they first came out from Whitfield uh, to Fimor and Hellman, are key encrypting keys, right? That's what you use the public key of the receiver to encrypt that. Uh, they're related numbers when you create a private public key pair. And we do that in my class when we take a look at that. We create these keys and, and we bind them to our name so we can sign hashes. The other thing we do asymmetrically, if you think of a hashing algorithm, mile three, is a, a, you know just to check for integrity problems. It's the wax seal in the bottle. But the private key tells me that that wax seal actually came from Microsoft or, or Bob or whatever, right? So uh, Diffie-Hellman can't do that, but RSA and a much more efficient elliptical curve uh, should be used today to uh, use the private key of the sender to sign a hash or the public key of the receiver to encrypt the key, the data. These things are small. The largest AES two, uh, key is 256. SHA2 goes to 512. Never seen anything bigger than 384 myself. Um, I'm sure they're coming. Now, when we create these, and you will do it in my class, you, you're creating a, a, a asymmetric key pair. And again, I prefer, I think everybody should prefer this until post-quantum stuff gets certified. Get rid of your, just say no to RSA. I could create them that, you know, it's not signed by a CA. It's pretty good, PGP. But if I want to use these, like, the way you trust that it's actually YouTube you're watching this on is not pretty good. It's it's federated from an X.509 certificate that certifies that X.500 name. That's your Active Directory LDAP in this, you know, YouTube.com. Now, for Bob, he would have one, there's some different usages. You could use it for TLS, you could do it for email, whatever it is, but they just certify that this name is who signed that and you can send them keys, right? So, symmetric keys, baby. Um, so this question, which will be used to encrypt content, I don't have to go too far. I don't have to look at all the detail. It's not public, it's not private, not public. No, it has to be an asymm asymmetric system. It's got to be AES. I don't have to know all this stuff. We'll, we'll talk about it in my class if you take it, but you know, the waiter would know right away. This is what you're looking for, sir. And in this case, you're detecting changes. What works on changes is a hash. So I don't have to get too too deep on here. Now you say, All right, but they use hashes. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but the thing that's likely used in either of these is an SHA. Now, uh, so again, we use symmetric keys to encrypt data. We use hashing algorithms to look for integrity problems. In this case, though, when we're when we're we're, we're looking for why so many bitcoins, well, you have a private public key by the bound of your name, right? How do you protect your private key? You do something to just a passphrase. You got to remember. And the reason I couldn't get uh, a Bitcoin into Bitcoin is because I knew I was too stupid. To, even though I, I said, you're going to forget your passphrase. <laughs> so until I got my wife sold on it, it took me like four years before I got her. And it went up quite anyway. So, yeah, forgotten passwords. All right. Now, uh, when we do part two, I'm going to get a little deeper. We'll use Wireshark. We'll sniff out, in this case, the IAC Square certificate. And we'll follow along and see, you know, uh, this, this is not a, a company idea. It's by the Federation, the fe you know, the, the ISO approved certificate authorities and how do you really trust them and i'm going to show you they're, they're not really to be trusted right now and we need to do something but i'll show you how it's supposed to work anyway all right and it wouldn't be really an effective uh, blurb if somebody doesn't buy something and they really is one of the best deals in it i'm telling you and i also sell pre-recorded boot camps for just a uh, hundred bucks to get my cas just be pre-recorded so all right thank you may you all live long and prosper i hope this helps somebody